Hi there, Tara here from Quilts Plus Love. We are a small quilt company specializing in t-shirt and memory quilts made from your garments. Today I wanted to talk with you just a little bit about preparing your garments for the quilting process. Um, the project I'm going to be working on today is a disappearing nine patch quilt. And there is a pattern in the description box below, so go ahead and grab that if you want to do this for yourself. Um, definitely, it's a beginner friendly project. You could tackle this on your own. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to do that. Uh, of course, if you're not confident enough to, to cut up your own special t-shirts, that's fine. You can always send them to us and we'd be happy to make this special quilt for you. So preparing your shirts for the quilting process is crucial to the overall success of the quilt. I really think you notice it in the end uh, when the shirts have been properly prepared for that. So if you're using materials with any stretch at all, uh, using a stabilizer is going to uh, reduce the stretch on that fabric so you won't have any distortion along your seam lines. Uh, definitely something that's important. It also helps if you're using, <laughs> if you're using maybe something that's well-worn, maybe the well-loved garments that you have in the back of the closet. Anything that has maybe little holes, uh, if it's threadbare, the stabilizer will help to add some structure to that fabric. It'll make it easier for your cutting and then definitely makes it easier sewing later and prevents, of course, any little holes from happening in your quilt top. So very important to use that stabilizer in there. So today, for this video, we're going to look at choosing the garments for your quilt. Naturally, you wanna go with just your favorite, right? They're, they're the ones that are most important to you, and that's totally fine. It can be um, a little harder than you would think to choose. I'm gonna talk you through some of the considerations you're gonna to wanna to think about as you're putting that pile of, uh, of garments together. Then, of course, once you have that pile, deciding which fabrics are going to be your focal fabrics and which are gonna be the highlight fabrics or more of a background type of fabric. And then of course, I'm gonna take you through the deconstruction process. Uh, in my project today, I have some denim, like a pair of jeans that I'm gonna be deconstructing. I've got a sweater, some t-shirt type of material. So you'll get to see how all of those come apart. I've made dozens, probably more than 100 <laughs> uh, memory type quilts from these types of garments. And so I've refined my process over time and I'm happy just to share that process with you. So we'll look at that. We'll also stabilize them while we're here. Um, in the end, I want you to just, just have this mindset that quilts are about love. Uh, so whether you make it or we make it for you, the most important part is that you love this quilt in the end. And I think doing the prep work up front will definitely help get you there. All right, so let's get started. All right, so onto the first topic, choosing the garments that you'll include in this particular quilt. Uh, for the throw size quilt that we're making today, I generally recommend between 8 and 10 unique garments. And if you have things that have one large logo, like this sweatshirt, um, jerseys, anything that have just one focus fabric or uh, one focus graphic there on the front, probably those would be better suited for a different project. I actually have a pattern I've designed specifically for those types of garments. Uh, it's the Gallery Frames uh, t-shirt quilt. I'll link that pattern in the uh, description box below. But so today what we're gonna be using instead are gonna be um, your solids, all over prints, maybe your flannels, um, micro prints. So very, very small prints or even large prints work as long as it's an all over print. So I've got uh, uh, some plaid here. I've got a nice flannel. I've got a large print. This is going to be a really cool um, use. We're going to put it on the cornerstones of each block, actually. Then I've got some solids. I told you I've got to have that denim that we will be deconstructing here in just a little while. So any of these would definitely work. Another thing that I would just have you consider, especially if you've not worked with a large variety of materials, is the thickness of the garment. Um, so bulkier fabrics are gonna create bulkier seams. There's just really no way around that. Um, so anytime you're using fleece, if, uh, some flannels, they're really thick, um, minky types of fabrics, anything like that is definitely gonna create a bulkier seam. Not a problem, just something to consider upfront if, uh, if you've never worked with those types of fabrics before. So once you have those, let's look at which we're going to use as our focal fabrics and which are gonna use as our, um, our backgrounds. 
I've worked with this particular customer uh, on three other quilts already, so she kind of has an idea of what she's really looking for. This is the last one that we're making, and it's actually for her personally. So she has asked me to use this print in the cornerstones. I think it's gonna look great. The rest of the quilt is gonna have um, Kona cotton. It's gonna be the color of cantaloupe. And I think it's gonna look really fantastic once it's all pulled together. So this is definitely gonna be um, a highlight fabric. And I have chosen these prints to be the, um, the focal fabrics. So these will be the larger squares in the quilt and then I'm going to use the rest of these solids and the denim to be our, our background. So these will be around the edges of the larger, um, larger prints. Now that we have these three piles kind of decided, you've got the cornerstone blocks, which uh, are referenced specifically in, uh, in the pattern. You've got your background and then you've also got your focal fabric. Once you have all three of those organized, let's get deconstructing. All right, so what I'm doing here, guys, is I am uh, positioning the shirt on my mat. I do like to do them face up, that way I can see if there's anything I need to be aware of. And then I've got a, just a regular old rot rotary cutter and my OmniGrid ruler. I like to use this one specifically because it has a nice length to it, so it can go all the way across most shirts. And what I'm gonna do is nest my ruler right up along the inside of this seam. And that way I know I've got all of the seam material in there, all of those, um, all those edges. And I'm just gonna cut it with my rotary cutter, going straight up. That takes care of all of the seams that you don't want included. But I do usually save the, um, the arm just in case I need extra materials. My big thing is that you just don't throw anything away until you are completely done with the project. So uh, here again, just doing it on the other side, I'm going to open my rotary cutter, line it right up along that seam, and then toss those over to the side. So now your shirt is deconstructed on the sides. You can just twist the top Using that ruler, again, you don't have to be perfect because of course we are gonna stabilize and then square these back up later. Uh, open that rotary cutter, slice right along the top there. This I don't typically save just because you can't really get anything of use out of that. So um, even with the, the hemmed edges intact, I will put these in the pile and these now are ready to be stabilized. So that's how you take care of this, the t-shirt types of materials, whether it's like this one, for example, is like a thermal weave, it's like a thermal knit. Um, that's how you're gonna do those. So let's get on to the next one. Shirts with buttons work a, a similar way. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this particular shirt, uh, I'm not gonna worry about the side seams just yet. There's a lot of material here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the arms first. So remove those sleeves right at the arm pit to shoulder. Uh, don't worry again about any extra seams that might be there because we're gonna work around those once we are done stabilizing our fabrics. Uh, you won't have to worry about that at all. With this one, I am gonna go ahead now that the armpits are removed, I'm gonna line up my edges here. That way I can just do a quick zip down the sides, taking care of those side seams, not saving any of that because really I cannot use it. It's not large enough and it'll just create bulk in your quilt. So you don't wanna include any of that. Now we have just the top left. For any type of neckline uh, like this that has a collar, you don't wanna zip all the way across because on the back, that actually could be a good amount of material that you're gonna use. So instead, what I'm gonna do is unbutton right here, and I'm going to cut off the collar with my scissors. That way we can preserve as much of the rest of that as we can. If we still wanna use it in the quilt, we have it available to us. It's not likely that we'll need that much, in the end, but you would always rather uh, err on the side of caution, 
I would rather throw a couple extra scraps away in the end than not have just enough to do what I needed to do to finish the quilt. So this I'm gonna stabilize, uh, or actually, you know, that's a, that's a pretty nice woven material. I don't know that I would stabilize it. I'll have to think about it and see what else I'm gonna have to work on first. See how much of it I'll have to use. Now to deal with the buttons, because there are buttons here. We don't want the buttons in the quilt at all, and there's a lot of stitching, and there's a lot of extra seams around where these buttons are. So we're gonna just take those off. Again, here with um, my ruler, my rotary cutter, not aiming for perfection. It doesn't have to be perfect, because we're gonna square this up, and we are going to cut this fabric down even more in just a little bit. So that's how you would deconstruct a button-down shirt. Now, finally, we have uh, we have the pants, and these are it's a it's a ladies' pair of pants. They have an elastic waist. You can see they're pretty well worn. Well worn. So for these, I'm actually going to put my rotary cutter to the side and use mostly my scissors. I'm going to start in at this waist. Uh, take out the waistline first because there's actually a large amount of fabric here that is gathered and if you can lay it flat it'll be easier to cut in just a few minutes. So let's go ahead and take this out. Now you can see how much wider that's going to lay. Uh, you do also have these sewn in pockets here uh, these are not uh, kind of a modern style pocket. They're just two layers of fabric sewn in to the side. It's like an overlap seam. Any more of those modern pockets, it's a pair of, or it's a piece of like maybe muslin that's sewn in and it's free hanging from the rest of the garment. So these will probably end up taking out this intersection uh, and eliminating that from the quilt but I'll still be able to use this top part here. So what I'm gonna do now is take one leg apart from the other. We're going to, with our scissors, just trim right down the crotch seam here and around the other side. I'm pretty comfortable um, deconstructing most uh, garments. So for you, I would definitely encourage go slow, uh, lay it out nice and flat to make sure you don't accidentally nip the other end of your fabric with your scissors. Of course, I've made mistakes. <laughs> I think we've all been there. Uh, but I'm, I'm at a point now where I'm pretty comfortable. And this I'm just going to hold on to and go right down the side. Now we can lay this out flat. And we're going to be able to get a large amount of um, background material, a large amount of cuts out of this pant leg. You'll do the same with the other one. And then we will be ready to start stabilizing our fabrics, stabilizing those t-shirts. All right, let's get that set up. OK, guys, I've got everything set up. I'm ready to stabilize. Still working on my sewing table. Uh, I swapped out my cutting mat for this really handy uh, little ironing mat that I made. Um, super easy to make one of those and also very, uh, very helpful. The thermal knit is face down on my ironing mat and I have a piece of fusible interfacing laid on top of it. What I'm going to do is touch this with a hot iron and it is going to fuse onto the back of that stretch material, reducing the stretch. Now your interfacing is going to have reduced stretch rather in either one direction or both directions. I have opted for Pellon, the featherweight fusible interfacing for apparel. For me, it's very light and it does reduce enough stretch. I'm familiar working with stretch materials. I sew uh, a lot of stretch materials all the time. So it reduces just enough stretch that I don't have any distortion, but it's also light enough that you won't notice it in your finished quilt. So some of the interfacing materials are, offer a lot of stiffness and they end up being really rigid in your finished quilt. For me, the idea with the interfacing is to reduce stretch long enough that I can get the quilt top piece together 
And then also stabilize the materials while I have it on my long arm. So while I'm doing that kind of high tension rapid stitching. Otherwise, I don't want to feel it. I don't want to feel it in the finished quilt because that takes away from the softness, the snuggliness, and overall the drape of your finished quilt. Use a nice light one that you feel comfortable with and follow the manufacturer's um, use and directions on how you apply it to your materials. Make sure you're checking those care tags on your t-shirts before you do this step. Nobody wants to melt their own shirt, but um, definitely check those. Then we're just gonna hit it with a hot iron and then this will be ready to cut. So here we go. I like to start in the middle and I always iron, very light touch here. And I'm going with the um, weft of my interfacing. So that means I'm going with the direction that it does not stretch. And you can see this material, um, or this interfacing rather, super easy to work with. It does not gum up my iron. And it is a super light touch. So you don't have to spend forever applying your interfacing. All right, one more just quick, make sure I got all of the corners, which of course I'll be cutting into this. So I'll take my strips from the nicest areas right here in the middle. We're ready. All right, now that your shirts are fully stabilized and you've got them cut up according to the pattern, go ahead and grab your pattern. We will be assembling these blocks, um, doing the nine patch twist, and then you'll see the full assembly instructions for the quilt in uh, the next video. Happy quilting.